Good morning. Today is Thursday, the 13th day of Adar. Today is Tainis Esther, the fast of Esther, the day before Purim. Tonight we celebrate Purim. And uh, today the fast will finish at 6 11. And of course, you got to remember today the joy of Purim, read, reading the Megillah, listening to the reading of the scroll of Esther, the Megillah tonight. And tomorrow we have four mitzvahs, which is the Megillah reading. A second time, it is uh, giving Meshlach, Mona's gift to a friend, a uh, gift of food, two types of food, at least one friend, and giving charity to at least two poor people, and having tomorrow a feast. Those are the mitzvahs we should remember to do tomorrow on the day of Purim. So talking about joy and... And this uh, theme, the Alta Rebbe is talking in this chapter, what we're learning in the Tanya. We're finishing today chapter 33 in Tanya, and the Alta Rebbe is talking about the real joy that we get from the knowledge of being with Hashem, as we explained yesterday, the Emuna. It's a tzaddik be'emunasa yichya. The tzaddik lives with his faith. And this is the, the faith that we have in the one Hashem, the one God. And it's not only that there is one God and there's not two gods. It is the oneness of God, that there is nothing else but Hashem. This is something that we get as an inheritance from our ancestors. It's in our blood, it's in our DNA, knowing the Hashem, that Hashem is everything. And, it, and as explained in the previous lessons in length, so when you focus on this, the, the ability to have Hashem's presence in your mind and in your being, that itself brings you the greatest joy that you are so close with Hashem. And we finished yesterday saying that the joy is a double joy. It is the joy of having Hashem, having the closeness of God, because when God lives within you, it is the greatest joy within your mind, within your conscience. And the more you focus on it and you connect with this, the more you realize how everything around you is nothing. It's nothing but Hashem. And that brings you joy. And then this is, there is the second joy, which we begin today saying, it is the joy that God has you are, jo you are rejoicing in God's joy. The joy that God has in having a home in this world, which means in a world where there is darkness, where there is concealment, is being revealed by, by us connecting in, in our conscious, in our mind, in our feelings, and understanding that Hashem is here, that itself, Hashem finds a home in our being, in our, in, in our midst. This is the, great, the second joy. But as we mentioned yesterday, <clears throat> when the previous rabbis divided the portions of the Tanya, <clears throat> he stopped right there in the middle. When we're saying the first joy, that knowing that Hashem is with us. Apparently, maybe because this is something we need to, has to resonate within us to understand and to appreciate the fact that Hashem is with us. His so let's continue <clears throat> in today's Tanya. <clears throat> Says the Alter Rebbe, Oy zois yismach bekeflayim. He will also rejoice doubly. <clears throat> Besimcha Hashem will be a double re rejoicing with the joy of Hashem, the the joy of God, the goy del nachas ruach lefon of his borech beemunazu. The great pleasure which Hashem bring, it brings to Hashem, the great pleasure in this faith. The faith that you have, the ultimate faith, a faith that we can achieve as being a Jew, we can achieve that faith that there is nothing else but Hashem. That brings <clears throat> a joy to Hashem. And that is why the Iskafia Sitra Achra Mamash, the Isapach Hashaychal Anoira. Because thereby, 
through one's faith in God's unity, the sitra achra, the other side, the evil, the evil, is being truly subdued and the darkness transformed to light. But when you live in a world that you don't see godliness and then you come to this realization and this amuna, this faith in the one Hashem, that really everything else is nonsense. It's everything is Hashem. That itself, Hashem finds place in, and that transforms the darkness into light. He says, the darkness of the clippers of this corporal world, which they obscure and they conceal the God's light. This world conceals God's light. That's the word, the word, the word world in Hebrew, olam, is, comes from the world he'elem which means concealment. And this is concealed at ace kates, kemesha kosov kates, som Until the end of days, as it is written, he sets an end to darkness. Meaning that they will come, that this darkness will disappear when, when Mashiach comes. The hainu kates ayomim. There's the end of days, is refers to Keitza Yamin. Keitza Yamin means the time when it begins the right side. The right side represents the, the side of uh, Chesed, the side of, reveal, of revelation. Sheyavi Ruach Atuma Mina Oretz, that will, uh, Hashem will banish the spirit of impurity from the earth. Venigla kvoid Hashem and the glory of Hashem will be revealed. The rochol basar yachdav, and all flesh will see. We'll be able to see with our flesh eyes, so to speak, the greatness of Hashem. The re- we will be able to see godliness. as will be explained later on in the Tanya. The Alter Rebbe goes to explain this in length. So this is the darkness that we break through, and this is the joy that we give Hashem. Continues the Alter Rebbe and says that this is especially the case outside of Israel, where the darkness is even more so than it is in the Holy Land. This is especially in the diaspora, where the atmosphere of, is unclean. It is filled with klipis and sitra achre, the shells and the other side that covers godliness. There is no greater joy for Hashem than the light and joy caused by the superior quality that comes when the light comes from the darkness. The light comes from the darkness, you appreciate the light much greater, and this causes Hashem, God, a great joy. And here the Alter Rebbe gives the now famous quote, what we, the Rebbe established, as we mentioned earlier, at 12, very fundamental verses and quotes, verses from the Torah and quotes from our sages. And that the Rebbe said that children should memorize those verses. And this is the very last of the 12 verses that every Jew must rejoice with Hashem. What does it mean rejoicing with Hashem? So he says, Vezeh Ushekosov. This is the meaning of the verse. Yismach Yisrael be'oisov. Let Israel rejoice in its master. Now what does it mean? Be'oisov means the, the maker, the creator. That the, that the Jew, Israel, the Jewish people, should rejoice with the creator. And al Rebbe explains what that, what that means, is that we should rejoice with the joy of the Creator. 
we are rejoicing when Hashem rejoices. What does Hashem rejoice? What brings joy to Hashem? Is the fact that we, the, that are the makings, we are the actions of Hashem, Hashem's work. And we make Hashem a home that Hashem can dwell within our midst. Says the Alter Rebbe Pirush, Shekol mi shehu mizera Yisrael. Whoever is of the seeds of Israel, whoever belongs to the Jewish nation, he shall be happy, rejoicing with the rejoicing of Hashem. Should be joyous with, with the joy of Hashem. That he is joyous and he's happy in the his abode here in the, among the creatures of the lower sphere. At the lowest level, Shehem bechinas asiyah gashmis, who are in the level of actual physical asiyah. Asiyah means action. As we learned in the previous lessons, there is the four world: Atzilus, Bria, Yetzira, Asiyah, the world of emanation, the world of formation, the world of uh, creation, the world of formation, and the world of action. The world of action is the lowest world where there is God's presence is obscured, it's concealed, and you don't see it. Which means you can't see the fact that Hashem is everything. And when we come to this realization within ourselves, we are making a home for Hashem, that Hashem can dwell in our minds and in our hearts. This is the great joy that Hashem has. And that's why when he says, Yismach Yisrael Be'oisav, that Hashem, the, the one who makes us, Says the Alter Rebbe, it, it is said in the plural, not in the singular. It says, For This reason, the plural form Be'oisav is used, which you should have say, Yismach Israel Be'oisoi. Israel should be happy with the one who makes him. What does it mean, Be'oisav? Be'oisav means the one who makes them. Who is them? Who is the plural? Says the Alter Rebbe, the plural refers to the plurality that exists in this world. The idea is to take this plurality and to unite it into one, and to unite it into one Hashem because everything is one, everything is Hashem. This world by definition is a plurality. Every, everything and everyone is for himself and for itself. That's what the Alter Rebbe says. This plural expression mark uh, the makers refers to the physical world. When we say beoisa, we said before that makes them. It also can refer to beoisa. God, the people, the, the Israel is happy with the makers. That is also the, 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 the point here. So when you're talking about the makers, what does it mean? So he says that because this in this world, we see everything in a plurality. The, says, this physical world is It is filled with the clippers, the sitra the other side, which is called the public domain. Domain of multiplicity. Vetture de Pruda. It is called the mountains of separation. That each one is felt as a separate, independent being. And our job is, is to turn it around and to make it one. And when you turn this into light, then they become a private domain. The Munaz It comes with this in this unity, with, with this emuna, with this faith, it becomes a private domain for God's unity. This is the greatest joy. And this is also connected with the Purim. And the Jewish people were standing the emuna with the faith for an, an entire year 
from the time when the decree of Haman came until the time when the Jewish people had the, the, the victory for an entire year, they were standing in a time of they could have they could have denied Hashem uh, and, and, and uh, denied the Jew, Jewishness and be saved that way, but they refused. They were standing by Muna with a faith in Hashem, with Mesiras Nefesh, with giving, risking their lives. And they didn't want to separate from this ultimate Muna. And that turned the darkness into light. As we celebrate on Purim, La Yudim we came the light, and everything turned around into joy and happiness. This is the end of today's Shir, the end of chapter 33. Thank you so much for joining and make sure to share. Sharing is caring. And uh, any questions we can take now the questions.